The Oklahoma teacher walkout continues on day eight. A leader in Washington announces his retirement and an OU student brings home a top academic award. This is OU Nightly. Good evening and welcome to OU Nightly. I'm Matt Marks. And I'm JC Bayless. Day eight of the teacher walkout and some teachers are calling for a new plan if they expect to get more funding for education. Now that's because the Republican controlled legislature says that it's not willing to vote on the capital gains tax. Yesterday, Governor Mary Fallon signed a bill to repeal the hotel tax, which was a part of the original plan to give teachers a raise and fund education. Now teachers are left asking what can be done to fund the $50 million hole in the plan. OU Knightley's Reagan Ledbetter spent the morning with some of Norman teachers who are saying it's time to move to Plan B. Yeah, JC and Matt, it is midway through the second week of the teacher walkout at the Oklahoma State Capitol, and there's some concern that there is a lack of direction. Teachers frustrated with the progress of the capital gains tax issue have come up with another option. Teachers, parents, and kids have packed the state capitol for an eighth day now. Two weeks ago, the legislature passed the 1010XX bill, giving teachers a $6,100 pay raise. Teachers said it was not enough, and today, that's still the message. You know, it's, it's been too long. We're not here because we want more money for ourselves. We're here for these kids. And if you would talk to these teachers, each one of those would tell you that. The OEA is pushing for a change to the capital gains tax exemption, but very little progress has been made. Now teachers are looking at other solutions. We've just been a little bit frustrated with the lack of direction, communication, and vision of the OEA as this has gone forward. Um, we kind of uh, feel like there should be input from the teachers. One option Norman teachers are expressing is raising the income tax. It was cut to 5% back in 2012. Well, what if we raise that back up to where it was? So it used to be at 5.5% for this lowest tax bracket. What if you return it to 5 and a quarter? If you returned it to 5 and a quarter, that would be $150 million of new funding. While teachers feel there is a lack of communication between them and the OEA, OEA believes they are close to what they are asking for. We got uh, very secure numbers from the Senate yesterday on exactly the amount that has been appropriated. So we feel very confident that we are 95% to our goal. Now, Reagan, you've spent a lot of time at the Capitol during this walkout. It looks like Norman teachers are leading the way on this secondary plan. Yeah, I think they're just frustrated with just the, the lack of direction the OEA has putting out there with no communication on, you know, what's last week there was kind of a set plan and a focus on, you know, what was the goal of this walkout. This week it's, it's, it's extending and there's kind of a concern that there's not really any direction. But Catherine Bishop did tell me about the income tax that is kind of just a bill that's out there and not much, you know, uh, political support for it. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, you've been there several days. I mean, how much longer do the teachers think it's going to go on? What have you gathered for how much longer this is going to be happening? Well, the thing is, the message really hasn't changed since day one. It's, you know, we will be here as long as we have to be here. Right. And that's what they've told me all day to day. And that's what they've been telling me for the eight days that they've been here now is we'll be here as long as we have to. A lot of schools are going back into to classes because they got state testing. But I, ta I spoke to a teacher today who's actually sending delegates daily where they're rotating and sending them down uh, to the Capitol while others stay in school. Wow, sounds All like right. they'll do whatever it takes. Exactly. All right. Thanks, Reagan. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Now, Norman teachers are not the only ones feeling a sense of frustration. OU Knightley's Sam Brown talked with other teachers that say that they are discouraged and they are still willing to fight. It's been eight long, hard days here at the Oklahoma State Capitol. But as you can tell behind me, these numbers really don't seem to be dying down much. And that's because these protesters are angry. I spoke with a few of them today, and they told me how frustrated they were that the legislators were not catering to their needs and demands. The system's broken, not the people. As a body of people, yes, they're broken because they've disappointed and they've broken their promises. We all know that. That's no secret. I made this sign because I keep hearing that we can't, and when there's 49 other states who can, you can't tell me that it's impossible to fully fund education. 
Despite progress made in the legislature over the last week, protesters still want more funding for public education. They've fought through fatigue, weather, and more for what they believe in, but they're also doing it for more than just themselves, and that's all the motivation they need. I'm afraid they're just trying to wait us out and we need to prove we can't be waited out. But the fact that this is a necessity is their fault. And this needs to stop. We're tired of it. Enough's enough. We, we're tired of being bullied around and pushed aside. It's unclear how much longer this walkout will last, but if there's one thing that's for sure, it's that these protesters don't mind playing the waiting game until they get what they think they deserve. Reporting from the Capitol, Sam Brown, OU Nightly. Now, some districts are calling classes back into session. We currently know that more schools will resume tomorrow, but around three dozen districts in central Oklahoma will remain closed. Now, there's no doubt education is going to be a hot button issue come election time in November. Today was the first day candidates could file for office. OU Knightley's Blake Hardman talked to some of them today at the Capitol. The first day of candidate filing here at the Oklahoma State Capitol. With lines reaching out the door, a diverse group of candidates were here to begin their journey towards office. The legislators done what we suggested a year ago on our uh, website where we showed how we could give a $5,000 raise at time. That's what they were asking at time. We showed a method to do it. This wouldn't have ever happened. That's the sad part about it. This did not have to happen. Open it up. Everything needs to be done in the light of day where everybody can see it. So we've got to open it up to the public. Hey, if you don't have anything to hide, why close the doors? My plan is just that, to renew Oklahoma. It's a five-point plan, but a focus on education funding, a teacher pay raise, getting 65% into the classroom, also reforming our state budget process, and diversifying Oklahoma's economy. We're talking about new renewable sources and alternative energy sources as a way to fund state government and to bring the teacher strike to an end, literally. It could do that. Let's throw everything up on the wall that can solve this stressful situation we're in right now. After talking to candidates today, it was clear that one theme carried throughout, a key focus on funding for education. Blake Hardman, OU Knightley. Candidates have until 5 p.m. on Friday to file for office. Oklahoma teachers aren't the only ones fighting for education funding. That's right. Tatum Wilson has details from the News Center. Right. Arizona teachers issues. are starting up their fight for higher salaries and increasing the education budget. This morning, teachers across Arizona participated in walk-ins before class. Educators rallied outside their schools, then walked in together to teach their classes. Arizona Educators United is calling for the state legislator to mandate 20% pay raises for teachers next school year. They also want to return school funding to 2008 levels and decrease class sizes and a big announcement from House Speaker Paul Ryan this morning. Why today I am announcing that this year will be my last one as a member of the House. Uh, to be clear, I am not resigning. I intend to full my serve term as I was elected to do. That's right, Ryan will not be seeking re-election and will retire from Congress after this year. He says he wants to spend more time with his family. Ryan will leave having accomplished one of his primary goals, tax reform. Trump tweeted about Ryan's decision, saying he will leave a legacy of achievement. And this morning, President Donald Trump addressed the Syria chemical attack that killed at least 40 people on Twitter. The president says Russia needs to get ready because nice, new, and smart missiles will be launched toward Syria. The Kremlin responded, saying they don't engage in Twitter diplomacy and the use of chemical weapons in Duma is fabricated. Trump did not specify when the missile strike might be launched, but made it clear that there would be upcoming military action. Trump continued addressing Syria and Russia in a series of tweets using softer rhetoric, saying we need all nations to work together. And Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg testified before the House Energy and Commerce Committee for nearly five hours today. Lawmakers questioned him about failing to protect data in the wake of the Cambridge Analytica data scandal. Well, JC, the weather today was a little warm today, right? Very. It's been like 80 degrees today. And you know, with the warm comes that drought. Exactly. So, Erica, actually, what can you tell us about this weekend's weather? That's right, guys. It's been kind of warm and gusty today, but...
fast forwarding of Friday, these conditions are going to change. 7 a.m. Friday, we are expected to see a few showers in southeastern Oklahoma due to a dry line that pushes through the area. As you can see, there's also a cold front. So this cold front will actually change conditions throughout the day on Friday. Right here on Friday around 5 p.m. southeastern Oklahoma will see the most potential for severe weather. So fortunately in Norman, in the Norman area, we won't see this potential as high as southeastern Oklahoma. And like I said, this cold front will be pushing through, causing a drastic change of conditions, which I will talk about later. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Erica. Still ahead on OU Nightly. OU students gear up for a week of going green. Plus, meet some of the music makers of this teacher walkout. You'll want to stay with us. Matthew Peters, who has been named a 2018 Goldwater Scholar. The award is given on the basis of potential and intent to pursue a research career in mathematics, natural sciences, or engineering. Peters is a junior from Purcell, Oklahoma, pursuing a dual degree in physics and mathematics. He's a member of the Honors College and has held a perfect 4.0 GPA, plus has received numerous other awards. Now he's one of only 53 OU students to win the award since 1991. Now spring brings a long list of activities for OU students. One of those is Earth Week. Shereen Hashem joins us with faculty advisor Liz Ross to tell us more about how students can get involved. Green Week is on its 10th year here at OU. There are students in the, this, these are the students in the programming committee behind OU's Green Week. Various events will be held throughout campus starting next Monday. I'm here with Liz Ross, Administrative Assistant of Environmental Studies. Liz, what can you tell us? Hi, um, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I, I've been assisting with Earth Month for two years now. Um, the Department of Geography and Environmental Sustainability has a student group called Green Week who is actually planning the wonderful, exciting events that are coming up. Um, yeah, a, a yogurt, a <laughs> yogurt, uh, fruit smoothie and yoga activity one day, uh, meet your meat where they'll have some uh, lovely little farm animals out for petting so you can actually learn why a lot of folks go vegan and vegetarian and a series of exciting events throughout the week that are all a part of a larger uh, OU wide uh, movement called Earth Month at OU. So what kind of activities can students look forward to within the next couple weeks? Uh, there's the distinguished speakers events that have been going on for a while. Uh, the Anthropocene group is also having speakers. So various speaker events where you can come and learn uh, more about environmental actions and research going on. Uh, obviously the exciting activities with the Green Week and uh, various student organizations that have their own kind of outreach activities. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Liz. Be sure to check out the Twitter on um, environmental or studies on Twitter? Environmental studies, yes. Okay, yeah. back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Shereen. While still ahead on OU Nightly, Erica Lopez will have a week at this weekend's weather. It's going to change in just a few days. I'll have more coming up. Welcome back to OU Nightly, taking a live look of downtown Norman. We can see mostly sunny skies. Those temperatures really warm, 80 degrees currently. Winds blowing from the south at 25 miles per hour. So those gusty winds continue. And because of those gusty winds, we are under a red flag warning, especially in southwestern Oklahoma or the western parts of the state and even regions in Tulsa under a wind advisory due to those winds that are going to persistently gust in between 20 to 25 miles per hour. So this is going to persist throughout the days, like I said, and that fire danger remains high. But those wind gusts currently at 30 degrees in Norman, current wind gusts 32 in Oklahoma City, most of the state at 30 and even some wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour in Lawton and those temperatures remain fairly warm across the state, 80 degrees. So this is a really abnormal for this time of year. We take a look at Gaiman 92. So really warm temperatures is starting to feel a little bit like summer over the area. But that fire weather outlook is going to be super critical in the next few days, near critical Wednesday and then Thursday, very critical. So super critical conditions because of that drop that continues to affect the western part of the state. Those warm temperatures that are going to persist over the area and those winds that are, are going to continue gusting fairly rapidly. But taking a look at lows tonight, 60 degrees. So warm temperatures for tonight as well and most of the state above 60s for tonight. And then tomorrow those high temperatures again warming up 83 as a high 85 in Oklahoma City, parts of southwestern or western Oklahoma at 90 degrees. So a fairly warm day tomorrow is expected in western Oklahoma.
Oklahoma, and that fire weather will continue over that area. But taking a look at the next few days, storm chances do increase for tomorrow night into Friday, and then the next, and, and then going into the weekend, those temperatures will drop drastically due to a cold front that is pushing through. Temperatures in the 50s, mostly sunny skies, and then next week another drastic warm up in temperatures with 80 degrees for Tuesday. So warm temperatures throughout the week, and then a cool down on the weekend, and then they're going to start warming up again as of next weekend or next week. Just when you're enjoying the nice weather. <laughs> it's got to go back down. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Erica. <laughs> well, as the spring season continues, many Sooners team are gearing up for pro. Uh, sorry, are gearing up for postseason and championship runs. Spencer Royce is here to tell us who is in action tonight. OU fans have plenty of sport to keep up with tonight as baseball and softball are both in action. Plus, Shiloh Sellers delivers us some great info on the women's gymnastics team as they gear up for St. Louis. Sports is coming to you next. Perfect games are a rarity in baseball. In fact, you have a higher chance of dying in a horse accident than you do throwing a perfect game. And no, OU pitcher Kyle Tyler didn't throw a perfect game last night, but he got very close. Tyler allowed no, two hits and no walks through eight innings of work as his offense loaded up the scoreboard with 13 runs against Arkansas Little Rock. This marks the Sooners' eighth win in 10 games as their record now sits at a pretty 24-11. OU takes on Oral Roberts tonight in Norman at 6:30. And the baseball team isn't the only squad in action tonight as OU softball has a matchup with Wichita State. And that game starts right about now. Looking for their 26th consecutive victory, the Sooners have been hotter than a billy goat with the blowtorch. And the top seed for the men's gymnastics national championships is none other than the Oklahoma Sooners. Matched up with Illinois, Ohio State, Penn State, Iowa, and California, the Sooners will need to place in the top three to advance to the final round. OU's matchups will begin Friday, April 20th at 7, and the finals will take place the following afternoon. And in a position similar to the men's gymnastics team is the OU women's team. OU night lead Shiloh Sellers has prepared an inside look at the Sooners' mindset heading into championship season. The women's gymnastics team heads to the semifinals next weekend while they will compete against Florida once again. But in gymnastics, the devil's in the details. And senior A.J. Jackson says that the Sooners are paying attention to every one of them. Um, we're really focusing on the details. Um, today we went over parts and... We didn't do routines, we just try to focus on like the pointed toes, the handstands hit, the stuff dismounts. I think that's really what's going to separate us from the others. I think as a team we have a lot more confidence. Um, honestly, the meet we had against Florida, we had a very good meet. And we just took um, all the positives from that meet and just built on them. So I think being able to build on all those positives has really like helped our confidence and how to approach every situation. It's kind of surreal thinking that this is like the last meet of my career and of the other seniors career. Um, I think we're just all trying to make the best of it. Going into this meet we just have the mindset of just do what you know how to do and things will come out how you want them to. The meet will take place April 20th. That's a Friday at 6 p.m. Now going into the meet, the Sooners are going to need to keep their eye out on number four, Florida, and number five, Utah. However, the top three teams get to advance to the Super Six. So either way, the Sooners are looking pretty. Shiloh Sellers, OU Nightly. Oklahoma City Thunder have already secured a playoff spot, but they still have to play one last regular season game against the miserable Memphis Grizzlies. Once tonight is over, the NBA playoff matchups will finally be set in stone. And guys, how do you feel about the Thunder's chances this year? It's going to be tough. They're going to have to play against the best in the West. So. And the West is the best this year, by exactly. far. Exactly. I was like, I don't know what like the opposite of like good is. So. Bad. Bad. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Spencer. Still to come on OU Nightly, more than just teachers are marching to the Capitol. Stay with us. Carbs at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Oklahoma authorities are investigating the remains of a man found in Grand Lake. A person walking nearby discovered the body yesterday, and police are unsure how long the unidentified body has been in the lake. The investigation is in its primary stages, and the Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation has been called in. 
The medical examiner's office is expected to conduct an autopsy to determine the cause of death. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, thank you, Kara. Now, a group of students showed up to support their teachers at the Capitol in a loud way. Ed Memorial's drumline came out to play songs and keep their energy high for the teacher walkout. They plan on returning to the Capitol on Friday with drumline members from other Edmond schools to make a more booming president for legislators to hear. I love seeing those kids. I've seen so many of them like come in packs just to play drums. That's got to be a cool moment for them. For sure. Right. Well, Erica, what's our weather fact for today? So if you're heading out to tonight's baseball game, Sooners versus Oral Roberts, you can expect temperatures in the low 60s and winds gusting between 20 to 25. So you do want to take a light jacket if you plan on attending this tonight. Sounds oh. real nice. <laughs> right? Very windy. Yes, very windy. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you all for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College at OU. We'll see you back here tomorrow night live at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night.